I am going to, in a moment, introduce Crystal Carter from Wix. So Crystal has 15 plus years of experience in SEO delivery and comms experience. She is a prolific speaker at events like Brighton SEO, Women in Tech SEO, SMX, uh, Moz, of course, uh, MozCon. She is a podcaster and she has recently celebrated 50 years, or is it 50 episodes? I don't think it's 50 years of Wix's Serps Up with the Wix podcast. Um, so we're going to have her on in a minute. She's going to be speaking about homepage SEO for dem domain-wide gains. So let us say hello to Crystal. Hello, hello. Claire. Hey, I didn't know you'd been uh, a podcast host for 50 years, Crystal. <laughs> Not for 50 years. That's amazing. I've been podcasting <laughs> since the days of black and white television. <laughs> I was podcasting the war of the world yeah. way back in the day. <laughs> uh, thank you for inventing podcasts because you. we love them. It's brilliant. Right. I mean, I don't know what people in their 40s would do without podcasts. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd just be sat there in the car like like right. that all the time. Yeah, just uh, talking to yourself without it being recorded. Yeah, honestly. yeah without saying to your child, shh, quiet, I'm trying to listen to Crystal and Morty on the podcast. Okay, hello, Crystal. Listen, bonjour, you, are, bonjour. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour. you are going to talk with uh, to us now, 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 about homepage SEO for domain-wide gains. We are excited to hear this. And just a reminder to everybody to ask your questions in the chat with a queue at the front. And now, here is the fabulous Crystal Carter. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, a special hello to Simon Cox, who I'm sure is in the comments uh, doing what a Simon does best. Um, so hello to everyone. I'm really pleased to be here for this great event. I'm going to talk about homepage SEO uh, for local businesses because I've worked with a lot of local businesses and the homepage is something that a lot of people overlook. They think, oh yeah, we did the homepage, that's done. Um, and they, they treat it as if it's something that they don't ever have to do again. And that's not quite the case. Um, so it's a really, it's something that's really, really useful and it's something that gives you a lot of value. So it's definitely worth spending some time on your homepage. When, uh, as someone from Wix, we have our Wix SEO SEO setup checklist, and then we put a lot of emphasis on the homepage for people who are setting up SEO on their on their websites because it is so important. Um, so, so yeah, let's just get into a little bit of why we're talking about that. So, in this session, we are going to cover why your homepage matters um, with a little bit of research that I've done around this. Um, different common homepage strategies that people use that we see people are implementing around the place. Um, also ta tactics for good local homepages. And I think that local is a really good space actually where if you're not super experienced with homepages, and even if you are experienced but you want to keep abreast of, uh, and on top of your competitive uh, space, Local is a really good place for paying attention to, to homepages in particular. Um, and also I'm gonna throw out a few resources for folks that might need some more there. So we're gonna cover why your homepage matters. So there's a few, of, there's many, many reasons why your homepage matters. The, the things that stick out to me are things around crawlability, um, because essentially your homepage is one of the first things that Google crawls when, when it's crawling your website. And so the pages that are linked from your homepage will very often have increased crawl priority and will often get indexed first. Um, I, I'll, t I'll share a little bit about this later, but I've seen it, seen it, the case where people, you know, they launch a new website and they say, oh, I can't see that my, my pages are getting indexed. Well, if you crawl it with Screaming Frog, and it does the sort of the sort of sitemap crawl. It'll crawl it one way. If you have it where where it crawls based on the links that are on your page, I've seen it before where people have launched a website and they're like, they're like well, we've got 25 pages on the site, but the home page is just a picture, and there's no links from the home page. So Google's going to the home page, and then they're looking for things to crawl, and there's nothing to crawl. So make sure that you have links on your home page, and think very carefully about the links on your home page. Also, when you're thinking about the links on your home page. If you're changing around the design of your homepage, always check the links that, that you had before and the links after to make sure that you haven't lost anything that was important. So links are really important. So when you're on your homepage, I've seen it many, many times. Um, so that's really important. 
Backlinks are really important. People talk about an evergreen content. Well, your homepage is the most evergreen link that you've got. If you do a, if you do, uh, you know, a migration, um, you might, a lot of your links might change, but unless you're changing from SSL or using, losing your dub, 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 chances are your homepage is going to stay the same. So a lot of your links are going to be going to your homepage, um, but you're also less likely to lose the links that go to your homepage. So think about that as well. Um, also performance, um, I'll talk a little bit about this and, and, you know, Core Web Vitals isn't the end all be all of performance um, and of the, you know, the goal of performance. However, um, with Core Web Vitals in particular, the, one of the things they, that one of the things that they measure is 75% of web traffic um, and or 75% of visits and a lot for a lot of pages, particularly for smaller page or smaller websites. 75% of visits are going to be going through the homepage. So making sure that you have a good homepage will actually help your performance uh, and, and, you know, core of vitals and, and page page experience overall. And also finally, perception. Um, we have a webinar, I'll share a link to it later, um, where my colleague, Morty Oberstein, who more, many people here know as well, um, they will, he talks a lot about branding and perception and how that's linked to your homepage. And it's one of the first things that people see. And if people log into your homepage and it doesn't make sense or it doesn't resonate, then it's then it's something that can be really, really tricky. Um, at Wix, we spend a lot of time thinking about our own homepage. Um, we, you know, we are we we test it, we we refine it, we are thinking about all of the, all of the different ways we can make sure that it appeals to who who uh, is is visiting visiting our site. It's something that we care about deeply. I highly recommend that it's something that you think about as well. Um, and also from a local point of view, this is a this is a Wix website. Um, uh, I I love chickpea. Um, and it's a vegan restaurant in Vancouver. If you're looking for some vegan food or some baba ganoush of some sort uh, in um, in Vancouver, I, I'm actually not sure. I cannot confirm or deny if they have baba ganoush, but I do love baba ganoush. Anyway, um, one of the things about your homepage for a local business is that when you're doing local SEO, chances are you're going to be doing citations. You're definitely going to have a Google business profile, and those will very very often point to your homepage. Um, they will often, in some in some cases with some listings, allow you to do like deeper links and things like that. But almost always, they will almost always point to, to your homepage. So if you have a web link, it will go to your homepage. So make sure that the kinds of information and the way that you're depicting yourself on some of these citation sites also aligns with what people are expecting on, on your website. So if you're seeing that when you're going to some of these niche uh, that you know, uh, some of the directories, um, citation places that are are relevant to your niche. If you're you're seeing that they're asking the same kinds of questions on your directory listing, and you don't have that kind of information on your homepage, then maybe have a think about whether or not you could have that that information on your on your on your web page. If they're asking for lots of pictures, and you know, ask yourself, do I have enough pictures, and do I have good quality pictures on my homepage? Um, and but make sure that that the experience of people there are are getting from your brand on places like TripAdvisor or places like Yelp or places like um, Instagram or TikTok, uh, um, like like they the fellow before, um, they resonate with with your homepage when people when people get there. Because I've definitely had a, as a case as a customer where I've seen something on the somewhere and I went to the homepage and was like, ah, this doesn't resonate. I'm actually not going to convert here. So let's think about some of our common homepage strategies now. Now, this is what I can refer to as a billboard. Now, I'm going to be sharing a lot of information about some big brands and how they do do their homepage. I, I think that it, it, one of the things that I always look at, look at is even if you are a smaller brand, it's always worth seeing what the big boys are doing um, and seeing, seeing what what uh, folks with giant budgets are doing are doing for their for their brands and seeing how you can apply those to, to your niche. They might not even be a direct competitor, but if you see someone who's doing something really cool online, think about how you can possibly do that. Um, and the Zara page is, I find fascinating. Um, because essentially, you know, they they change around the picture, but but essentially, it's this: it's it's a couple of drop downs of of you know a location and a language, um, and they're able to do this for for a couple of reasons. One of them is because they are a giant brand, um, so they don't have to worry so much about about their brand name. Loads of people know about their brand name. So if you're going to be doing a page that that essentially has like very very little on the page, I would I would hazard against doing that exclusively, there are a lot of people that do a combination where they have the, the billboard at the top and, you know, sort of big banner image at the top, and then they have the information below. But I would hazard hazard against doing a page that is solely uh, a picture and, and a link, unless you're a big brand like Zara. 
But one of the other things that's interesting about Zara is that it's not just the image. Um, this this page actually has 96 internal links. Um, and it's the only page of some of the big brand uh, homepages that I researched that has navigational intent. And basically, this is allowing them to point people to some of their, their um, international uh, locations, some of their international SEO things. So they're using this very, very strategically um, and particularly, but from, from a visual point of view, it has that sort of sort of big impact, uh, sort of brand feel about it. Now, we, a lot of people use this in combination. So for instance, this is a local business um, that's, that's using Wix, they're do, they, and they are a pizza delivery. And they they have that, the, this is actually a video on their live site. Um, and you're able to, to get a real good sense that like it's sort of handmade, artisanal, art, artisanal pizza, and they've got great ingredients and get all of that really, really quickly from the page. They also have a link where you can order online and then further down they have, have more details, but that gives you a really good way to sort of introduce your, yourself to your audience. Um, similarly, this is uh, Jolly Bodies, fitness, fun, and more. And you know they're they're offering a sort of a sort of welcoming space. Um, you sort of get that that brand uh, appeal. And again, they also have information about where you can purchase purchase there as well. So when we think about a billboard, essentially what you're you're sort of trying to do is you're trying to sort of focus users on a single task. On, on the Zara example, they're focusing people on choosing where they are. Like, tell me where you are, so I can point you to the right page. That's what they're that's what they're they're um they're focusing on. The pizza one was saying, order here. Look at this beautiful pizza. You know you want it. Press the button. Order here. Um, and and this one, Potter Trail, which is a, a, a great Wix website that talks about um, it's a Harry Potter uh, tour in Edinburgh. If you're up there, um, and and they are pointing people to to their book here. They've got a few few information there, but the, the only button you've got there and the main part is the is the book here. So when you're thinking about that, you would create it with like a big big well optimized image, um, and you would make sort of that you had clean composition above the fold. Um, any menus, you want to sort of have them sort of minimalized um, and things like that. But you also want to want, want to optimize it with structured data because if you've got images and things like that. And if you've got minimal text on the page, you want to make sure that the, that the that the structured data is backing backing up what you're what you are showing on the page. And um, you also want to make sure you have all your image attributes um, and that you've got good links across across any drop down menus and other menus that are across the site. So another one um, is is the funneler. I've got some fun names for these. Um, so the funneler is another type of type of website, and this is essentially designed to filter audiences based on an intent or service. Um, and this aligns with brands that have a diverse big a diverse business offering or evergreen branding or you know a few very specific audiences. So um, this this is something that we see from Virgin and Virgin is somebody they've got a very evergreen brand, but they they do a lot of different things across their across their brand. So you know there's Virgin in space, there's Virgin trains or there were Virgin trains. Um, there's mobile phones, there's money, there's th things like that. But the brand Virgin sort of sits across all of them. So they, again, they're funneling people to all of these all of these individual places. Um, and this one's interesting because because it has a really high percentage of backlinks. So because because the the main brand is a sort of parent brand and it's sending sending information out to it you know that if you have if you have um if you're looking for information about virgin you can go to virgin and, and that they'll point you to what, whatever brand uh, entity that you're looking for um so that's that's an interesting way that the way that they're using that and they have a high percentage of backlinks uh, that are pointing just to the home page something like 81 percent of their backlinks are going just to virgin.com um, in, this, in this particular space. And this doesn't necessarily only apply to brands uh, or to, to brands within brands. This can also apply to products. So for instance, Starbucks, which has lots of local lo local locations, um, is pointing people to, to their uh, rewards cards, but they're also pointing people to their to their products just as they come into the site. And then they also have a link for, for finding in the store. For a, a smaller local business, you might be thinking about something like um, like your menu or order online. So, for instance, this is a, re a restaurant that is that is saying, "Here's our menu. Um, if you know if you want to eat in 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 the restaurant, here's where you would order online. Um, if you are wanting to order with you know DoorDash or some something to that effect." Um, and so, essentially, when you're thinking about this. 
Um, you're going to want to point people to high value content. You can't funnel everyone to everything. Um, and this is this is something that is going to allow you to demonstrate the clear, distinct um, offerings for your business, um, and also to help to help make sure that you are getting people to the sort of high value uh, segments of, of your audience. I've seen this done with recruiters, for instance, where they where are recruitment companies where they'll have one section that is for employee employees who are looking for jobs, and one section that's for employers that are looking for jobs. Um, and if that is a if, if both of those those audiences are important segments, then you might want to think about putting that putting that on your homepage first so that people can get to those things quickly. And again, you can do this with UX segmentation, with buttons, with content prioritization, particularly on mobile where it's more vertical. Um, and for these, you're going to want to optimize with um, keywords for each segment. So if you are segmenting, if you are funneling into, into like say the employer employees, you're going to want to do, um, to make sure that you've got keyword targeting that's unique for both segments. Um, and you'll want to make sure that you're segmenting the, the keywords in the title, meta description, all of that sort of stuff. And that you're supporting um, rich, supporting like these sort of top funnel uh, um, UX elements with richer copy below the fold. So let's say you've got your menu here, your order online uh, as a sort of big sort of banner thing at the top. Lower down, you're gonna to wanna to think about, you know, expanding into like, this is our restaurant experience. This is our order online experience, that sort of thing. So that you're serving everyone um, on the homepage before they start clicking through. And, and here's an example from, from another Wix website. This is Stone Theater, which is based in North Carolina in the United States. Um, and this homepage ranks for uh, 22,000 keywords um, and it's getting something like uh, 134,000 uh, keywords or 334,000 uh, visits a month. Um, and essentially they are funneling to all of their different, all of their different venues. So, you know, they've got the point, the Mount Millstone, Sun Valley. These are places where they have their different cinema cinemas um, where you can watch, you know, the latest Denzel Washington movie. And what you see from these funnels, and you see this with other, other websites as well, is that this actually affects what happens on the SERP. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's important to think about the sort of com combination of UX and, um, and SEO on your homepage, particularly with local, but for other sites as well. Um, because what you see is that Google is also filtering these things on, on the SERP. And part of this has to do with, with the way that they're seeing users, users move through the site. It has to do with how you are surfacing content on the site and how users are, are you know, getting more, more visibility for that, for that site. And it can support more of the, of the traffic across the site. So think about, about how you are uh, guiding users through, through your site and how that affects what users are seeing on the SERP before they even um, get through. So the next one I want to think about is a converter. Um, this is from later.com. Uh, I'm a big fan of them. Um, I think they do great marketing. Um, and essentially on a converter is, is, you know, it's a page that's designed to get a user to do, to complete a task, um, to sign in, to register, to purchase. And this, this aligns with um, brands that want you to help users achieve a goal, which might be to buy, buy a thing or register or which, whichever it may be. Um, and this is also something that, you know, shopping sites do, you know, the places like Amazon, Etsy, eBay. Um, and what's interesting about these, these, these sites that are focused on converting is that it can sometimes be more efficient, particularly if you're a business that is maybe stretched, like if you're a local business and you maybe don't have, you, maybe you're wearing a lot of hats and maybe you were doing the the, the Facebook marketing uh, or the Facebook ads and the Google ads and the Bing ads, and you're also doing the organic and that sort of thing. You might want to think about a page like this that is optimized for conversions um, from an SEO point of, point of view as well. Um, so, so that you can essentially drive, drive all of your traffic to that. So, so this one in particular had the highest percentage of, of overall traffic going to the homepage. So the, for later.com across the domain, 21% of their traffic was going to, was going to their homepage. And they also see, see a very similar page, um, showing up for a lot of their ads. So they're not changing their, their ad, um, they're not creating different PPC pages for, for their homepage. They're using the same page because their page, their homepage is already set up for conversions um, or essentially above the fold the fold is and this is something that that you can see across smaller businesses as well um, this is a site um, that is um, based in Vietnam and it is a taxi site um, a limousine rental um, and and transport uh, site and essentially as soon as you get on the page you can see how you can book a car 
really, really easily because that's why people are coming to their website. They're coming to the website to book the car. Don't bury that lead. Don't make people look for it. Put it on the page so that people can do it straight away. Reduce friction for users. And that's essentially what pages like this are, are, um, are designed to be. Um, so I think that when you're thinking about, you know, your funnel, funneling traffic to businesses, you want to be thinking about funneling traffic um, to direct business offerings and audiences. Um, you can create this with buttons, forms, um, chat, chat points. Um, you can also create this with purchase points. Um, and you also want to think about um, optimizing this with relevant keywords that are that are targeted towards the task. Um, things like buy, shop, um, book now, et cetera, et cetera, can be added to both the copy, the meta descriptions, um, the title tags, things like that. Um, and these will support conversion points within uh, and links. Uh, these can be supported with links and conversion points to deeper content. And one of the things this is um this is another website that's doing this um, locally. So this is Valley Medical Group, um, and they are they are pulling in around about um, they're ranking for about five thousand keywords of, on their homepage, getting around um or getting around twenty three thousand um, visits a, a month. Um, and essentially, what they're doing with this one is they're actually pointing people to some of the some of their sort of deeper links to some of their wider uh, tools. So. Um, they're they're a medical group, and they've got a place where you can request request medical records. You can um, you can check in with their advisory council. They've got their patient portal and things like that. And not all of those are even located on their regular domain, um, but it allows people to 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 complete some of those actions um, very very quickly. Um, and I mentioned these guys as well, but you can see how well they're well they're doing this so that they've got the form shut, set up straight away. So it's really really easy to do that. Um, and now going on to the informer, not the 90, 1990s uh, music uh, from from uh, Snow, but um, also thinking about this one. So the informer is a page that that serves lots of information quickly, and it aligns with um, thought leadership brands, uh, the digital resources like weather and knowledge bases and things like that. And I've seen a lot of these um, who provide sort of local information and local news um, as well, and even like local sort of surf reports and things like that. Um, and this is an example of one that's that is based around um, Dublin. So they are uh, so they are are covering all of the food in Dublin, um, and they rank for um, two hundred or two thousand seven hundred keywords, uh, including salad in Dublin. Um, and they're getting lots and lots of uh, lots and lots of traffic to their page. One of the things that they're doing is they're posting something like four posts a day, and for something like this, um, they it's really important that they have their latest content right at right at the top of the feed. Um, so this is a this is a page that is designed to make sure that they're showing new content to Google as user end users as it's created, and they're doing this with blog feeds, with strategic internal linking, with headers and keywords. Um, and they're also going to be, um, of course, optimizing this with, um, you know, well, well structured, um, you know, Google Google Search Console um, and sitemap submission to being. Um, you can even submit your RSS to to Google Search Console as well. Um, and they're also thinking about their link priority and their link hierarchy across the site. In the similar sort of realm is the feeder. Um, and this is more more like a link directory. It's not necessarily content that is brand brand new, but necessarily, but but potentially content that is that is very high value. Um, so it will, if you have lots and lots of content and you're looking to share that across your site, then there's there's a few ways that you can do that with a feeder page. And a feeder page is not even necessarily a, a destination. It's a sort of gateway to some of your some of your other other content around. Um, and you would be surfacing content, uh, new content created by a sort of category, um, um, and this will support ind indexation. Um, so what was interesting about the about the fandom page was that we found that that wasn't even their top page, for instance, when I when I looked at the research there. Um, so it's more of a sort of conduit for the wider activity of of the website. Um, and what we see with with a feeder page is that you can see see that you're going to be thinking very strategically about your internal linking, making sure that you're linking out to to pages um, consistently, and that you've got good headers and keyword copy for feed collections, um, that you're automating, um, adding keywords to blog summaries and things like that, um, and that you are surfacing high performing content. 
Um, so looking at the research for these types of pages, I found it very interesting looking at um, looking at Virgin, looking at Later, looking at, um, at London Stock Exchange, Zara, Feeder, and I think there's great things that you can learn from here from um, from local local businesses as well. Um, with a funnel one where you have lots of where you have lots of different strands to your business, you're Going to want to focus a lot of your backlinks on your home page because you're going to have a lot of a lot of change going around there um if you're thinking about a converter then you know you're also going to be thinking about you know driving a lot of traffic to to your to your home page um and potentially potentially consolidating some of some of your um and test this of course but um potentially consolidating some of your some of your activity um to to be more efficient with you know which content goes where um and then the other one you want to think about um, an informer and a, and a feeder are really, really good um, types of content for if you have lots and lots of content that's coming around uh, quite regularly. If you're publishing very frequently, then having a, a homepage that's very active and shows that you're publishing very frequently will really work in your favor. Um, and I think that if you're, if you're doing a billboard, I would say if you're a smaller business, I would highly recommend uh, doing that in a in, in, in maybe at the top of your page, but maybe not for the whole page. So let's get into some of the tactics for good um, local home pages. So when I think about good local home pages, we try to think about the menu and the links. Um, the internal links and your menu are really, really important on on your home page, um, and it is important to make sure that users can can go to the uh, to the pages that are most important. It is important to make sure that that you know content which is high value and maybe isn't even necessarily highest in your in your site architecture, but is of high value to the users or you know users users really appreciate it is surfaced on the page. Line links are really valuable for this in particular. Um, if you're using uh, other other links, um, you know, via JavaScript and things like that, sometimes sometimes they can be crawled differently. So I would highly recommend backing up any high value links with a line link as well as a sort of, you know, a sort of automated link with things like that. And when we're thinking about local pages, you can get a bit of a steer here. So this is a this is a, one of the uh, best hostels in in um, Denver, Colorado. Um, and and this is this is an example of, of a site that's got, you know, really good menu and they have the got really good CTAs and things like that. If they were looking to update their their menu and CTA as a local business, you get a lot of steers from Google because they have a lot of spaces where they are um, where they have a lot of spaces where they are showing um, you know the kinds of things that users are looking for. So if you have a, a site, if you were the 11th Avenue Hostel and you wanted to think about you know maybe we need different things on our homepage, you could go through some of these things and go, well, do we have directions? Um, you know, do we have our prices very clear? Do we have our reviews on our page? On our page? Do we have our photos? Do we have things about our, our Wi-Fi? Um, you know, our policies? Um, do we have you know stuff about our cleaning, our checkup checkout times? All of that sort of information is that information available? Um, or easily accessible from our homepage on our, on our site, and and the, and so I think that that's something that's really really useful to think about as as a local SEO business. And then I think also when we go through, um, I think also when we go through, um, we are also thinking about you know other things. So we want to make sure that we've got local organization schema markup. Um, we want to make sure that we've got our NAP. Uh, all the all the way through there as well, and that that's something that should be supporting your local local business markup. And then I also think that we want to be um, thinking about. Um, I think we also want to be thinking about. Sorry, I'm looking at the time. <laughs> um, um, we also want to be thinking about making sure that we've got um, high content feeds and high high value categories. So I mentioned you know the feeder. I mentioned the informer, and if you, that is a content, that is a website that you have, then you want to think about making sure that, that that is on your website. So if you have a blog, you can set up a blog feed that's on your site. And one of the things that I've seen before is that I had a client, a client who was a recruiter, and we changed the website, and and we saw the traffic decrease significantly across across the site, and we and I couldn't we couldn't figure out why. And one of the when we looked at it again, I went through Wayback Machine, and I actually found that previously. On the, the former iteration of the website, we had a job feed 
that said the latest jobs that were on the, on the site. And then when we redid it, we didn't have a job feed on, on the homepage. And when we put the job feed back on the site, then suddenly we, we saw bet much, much better performance. So if you have content that is changing over regularly, if you have content that people are looking for um, very frequently, then make sure that you're showing that um, on your homepage and things. I think I saw a question in the chat that was talking about, about performance. Um, and I think also, and I think that if you're thinking of a sort of a big banner image on, on the homepage, it's very, very important. I've seen this happen as well, that you make sure that your page is, uh, you know, has good image optimization, you know, it's your standard things like image alt text, image alt text, all that sort of stuff, but also make sure that it's optimized for performance. So um, Chickpea, as I mentioned before, is Wix website. They're, they're crushing it on their core web vitals. Again, it's not the end all be all, but it can be a signal that you, that you, um, you know, maybe need to make some improvements on, on your, on, on your image optimization. Um, and I've seen it the other way where I've seen people who uploaded beautiful photos, but it was sort of, I literally saw, we had one, I saw one website that had a 10 megabyte um, image on their home homepage. And it was just like, guys, no, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't, the page could hardly load at all. So make sure that that you're not, you're not doing that. Um, at Wix, we have a few, few things that will, that will automatically compress um, and images that are that large. Um, but uh, but it's worth worth making sure that you're not doing that off the bat, and that you're that you're reducing any images um, to the best possible, uh, the lowest possible file size, highest possible resolution, um, before you are adding them to your site. You also want to think about making sure you have your CTAs with um, keywords uh, and clarity, if particularly if you're thinking about a converter a converter web page, um, and if you're putting that on your on your homepage as well. Um, and finally, if you're wanting to get some more information here, um, then it's worth checking out some of the information that we have on the Wix SEO hub. Um, I go into a bit more detail about some of these homepage SEO strategies um, in a blog on the Wix SEO hub. We've also discussed this on the uh, on a webinar. We've also discussed this on a podcast as well. It's something that I think is really important. Um, and I hope that that has been helpful. <laughs> hey, very helpful. Crystal, that was full of uh, very many things that I need to watch uh, again. But do you know what? Because we've only got two minutes, I'm just going to go straight to questions uh, okay. because there are very many questions. Let's okay. have the first one. Oh, Simon, he's, oh, trying to out, he's trying to out question me. Um, with a brand with a lot of stakeholders, how do you manage, this is such a good question, how do you manage what gets on the homepage without resorting to a carousel or a fight, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> it can yeah so so i think that like pri money gets the priority like the money gets the priority um at the at the end of the day like whatever pays the bills gets the priority and that that should be at the top of the page if there's um and it, and and then i think if you're in like a regulatory space um for instance if you're if you're you know like if you're a bar <laughs> um you know you have to be like we only serve people over over this age um like if you're if you're um if you're a, a doctor's a, a doctor or some sort of medical space then you need to make sure that you have links at least links but certainly you know information about your qualifications and all that sort of stuff maybe look Lower down the fold, but above the fold, whatever makes you the money should be should be should take top priority. Um, and and I've had so many discussions where people are like, "Oh, I want this beautiful video," and I'm like, "But it won't load. Yeah. It's not loading, yeah. guy." And I want I want it to autoplay. It won't load. <laughs> like I, there was, I had a company that we were working with. They were solar panels, and they had this beautiful sweeping image of a of a factory with solar panels on the top of it. And it was like 15 megabytes. I was like, y'all, nobody needs it. We don't need this. Nobody's watching that. No one cares. I'm sorry. Okay. Link so it's, it. It, it's all about the money. Uh, right. What's the next question? Um, oh, NAP on the home page as well as map. So uh, I think it's just a, a, a very specific locally question. Um, I say yes. Yeah. <laughs> especially yes. if you're a single location maybe not if you're multi-location because you can't have yeah. all of them yeah but also like i first of all i love a map full stop like Who i doesn't? just love i just love maps um and and second second of all like it, i think if I, I think people find it comforting and also people can just click on the map like users can click on the map and then do their directions from it so absolutely have that have the nap because it's a local seo that's the first thing you do, but also, also, I would, I would say have the, have the map. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great. It's useful. Brilliant. 
Thank you. Got it. One more, one more. Oh, Simon again. What <laughs> special words or data do you use to convince a business to change their homepage from a nonsense mission statement <laughs> to an explanation of what they actually do? <sighs> I, I tend to use, okay, what special words or data? I look at competitors. <laughs> so I remember I was do, doing um, an audit for an architect and and the architect had like something like uh, designing brilliant, brilliant ideas and concepts. And it's just like, what? And I was like, we should do some like SEO, like saying like architecture firm <laughs> account of architecture. And and they were like, well, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know, who ranks number one for architect? Like they were like, and I was like these guys, and they're not some like nobody architect. It's not something they had a they had a really SEO page, and they were the guys who designed like the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Like these were the these are people who design museums. Like they're making money, and they're using SEO. So like show them people who are doing it who who they admire. Um, I think if everybody gets FOMO, show them FOMO. Like that's what that's what I would say. Like, look at look at this and look at you and like you could do that. You could definitely do that. We can find a middle ground, please. I and it, I'll say it again, just because last two days, every single thing that anyone has said about um, how do I get my clients to do this? It's like, show that your competitors are doing it because they will be doing it. Crystal, we need to say goodbye to you. <sighs> Bye. <laughs> thank you so much that was so valuable so much there brilliant thank, thank you and we'll see you again soon yeah